Hello, I'm the artist Michael Zotos, and today uh, we're in the end of June uh, 2021. I'm going to give you uh, some tips on actually creating the artwork that I make, uh, that I've learned over the years. Now, first, I just want to show you something. This is um, a piece that's been cut, sanded, primed, and painted a few times, so it's ready for the artwork. This is a very similar piece with the eye and the mouth on it, which is most of the artwork. From here, I'll just put a, a border around it, some dots, color these sections in, whatever I want to do. But the fact is, getting it to this stage is um, a lot of the tedious work. Now, I want to show you, the eye and the mouth are critical, okay? And that's where my tedious work that I like it perfected comes in. Now, if, when you first go to draw the eye, in, in this case, and you can use this technique for a lot of different kinds of artwork. Uh, I started using it on, um, when I was doing work on, on uh, paper and foam core. You want to draw, okay, but what do you draw with? Now, I'll show you. These are some markers. You could draw with these markers, but it leaves a big imprint and um, you can't get it off if you don't like it. So I found going to these. These are watercolor pencils. You could do your basic outline with one, any one you want. I use the red a lot. And what happens is if you don't like it, if you want to change it, you just take a damp rag and wipe it off. Okay. And um, if you do like it, then you go over it with paint and the paint, uh, these are acrylic paints, they basically absorb, or the, the watercolor from the pencil just works into the paint. And if you're doing abstract work, this is a little bit of an abstract work, uh, a little bit of a, a, let's say I go with some yellow or some orange over the, the red, that little bit of red in there doesn't hurt anything, and, and it, it comes out good. Okay, so that's the, uh, the first tip is use watercolor pencils for your basic outline. You can get them off and when you leave them on, they just work right into the paint and everybody's happy. Okay, now the second uh, is the paint itself. Now, you need a flowing paint. There are two critical elements here. One is a flowing paint and the other is that the brush isn't frayed. Take a look at this brush, okay? The end of it is good, but it starts to fray. And when you're doing tedious work, that fray can ruin the lines. Those are two important issues to maintain, okay? It, it, it seems like a waste of time when you're in the fray of the moment doing the work to go and, and, and add some, some flow aid to your... Um, paint to make sure it's flowing nice and to make sure your brush is not frayed at the ends. Those are tedious, pain in the ass things to do, but you got to do them. Now, what I use is baby food jars. I'm going to show you. This is a two ounce baby food jar. This is a two ounce baby food jar and there's color in there. Okay, I don't know if you could see it, all right, but uh, that's a yellow. All right, this is a red, all right, uh, anyway, in the olden days and still in the newen days, what people did was they take a palette, you stick your thumb through the hole and there's a few colors and then you mix the colors for every area of what you're doing. And you know what that winds up with? winds up with people using the same mixed colors all the time because they get used to how to do that. I mix my colors in the into the baby food jars because first of all, you're using a small amount, okay? Number two, I make a lot of these. I have totally maybe two dozen baby food jars with, with different paint mixtures. And there's a red, there's an off red, the red orange, um, there's the same thing with blues. With, with blue with a little, a little uh, black in it, pink with a little black in it, 
And you can use those and put them on, on something hard, like hard plastic, and mix them together also to make something a little different. But the fact is, most of your work is done when you have it in the baby food jar. It seals well, it closes tightly, and you can go for years. But every now and then, every two years, get rid of it, okay? Make them new. Because there's nothing worse than gummed up uh, paint. And if you're not using it over two years, you're not gonna use it anyway. Okay. Now, smudges. When you're doing tedious work like this, now and then you'll get a smudge. What do you do? Well, you fix it, but no. Let it dry, okay? Let it dry and then fix it because the new paint you're going to fix it with, if it isn't coming out perfectly, you just wipe it off because the underlying is dry. If the underlying is still wet, you um, are smearing that into the new stuff and it's, you know, it becomes uh, futile, okay? Now, another tip on that uh, vein is to use a uh, primer, white primer. I use white primer, I keep it in the baby food jar, uh, well mixed, okay, because it's not like these other paints. These other paints are thick acrylic paint, okay. The primer is not. Now, primer has its own thing. It shrinks. It actually grabs and shrinks. And it's, if you get uh, one or two coats of white primer on your smudge or your problem and you let it dry when you go over it, it the, the paint looks good much better than if you didn't use that okay so so primer is critical and even on big mistakes like you painted it the wrong color just let it dry then go over it with primer two coats and then start over again and, and then you're good um, even these these like like behind me I have a um, sorry a, uh, a good sized pie head, I call it. The yellow on there, I like that color yellow. Now, before I put that yellow on there, I primed it with a good white primer, and the yellow comes out better, okay? So primer is a very important thing for what I do. Remember, I'm not doing canvas work where they use gesso and they have specific things for that. Not that nothing that I'm doing can be used, can but that's a different uh, procedure, it's a different work, okay? Uh, now, when I'm through with the job, with a, with a uh, I take a load of these, and there are different paints, different colors on there. I want to protect it, UV protection, road dirt protection, okay? Uh, what do you do? Well, initially, I went out and I bought some nice uh, oil-based polyurethane. There you go. All right. And uh, every time it sits in the sun, it discolors. It turns yellow. And sometimes not in any uniform way. It looks like somebody peed all over it. And I made some big entities that I painted them an off yellow. And then I did polyurethane on there. They held up really well, but it looked like, uh, you know, the dog thought it was a fire hydrant. So what I found was this clear, water-based, clear, crystal clear finish, clear satin, okay? And there are a few different brands. It's hard to come by um, in interior, exterior, one that'll work outside. A quart of good exterior is like $30, but it goes a long way. Now here's uh, like a final tip here. First of all, do not use it out of the container. What happens, and people don't realize this, anything that you go over, like even when I did foam core work, and when you're all finished using markers and things on it, you go over it with this, I don't know, a kind of a glaze, it seals it. Um, you spread around the underlying work because there are solvents in anything pretty much that, that I found that goes over a, a, a work. So when you dip the brush into this can and you um, do the work and a little bit of the red and the yellow 
get on the brush and then go back into the can, you contaminate the whole can. So instead you take a little out and you put it in a small, like a bean can, like two ounces of it, and you work from there for what you're working on. And then you throw the extra away. Now, this is critical. In order to make sure that you don't ruin the work, there's nothing worse than spending, I would say this eye took me 40 minutes, and that's after practice. Okay, and then you, you smudge it. The solvents take these little teeny tiny reds and greens and everything and mix them together. And now what do you have? And it gets all over the other white. Oh, it's just a lot of fun. You know, you, you could ruin 30 pieces and, the, and it, it, the coat goes on quick. Okay, what you do is you get this spray. I have here clear satin, water-based spray. It has to be the same base as the um, the final coat and, and in case you know this is water based that's what I use you shake the can up real good and you spray over the part that has the paint on it the the, the acrylic paint okay the white is fine I usually just go over the whole thing pretty quick from a little bit of a distance you just spray it give it a, a little and, and, and it's done and you set it down and you let it dry a half an hour, okay? Let it dry pretty good. And then you take, and you take your little bean can, which is, like, excuse me, about this size, with some of the, um, <coughs> excuse me, we're outside from the pollen and everything, um, with, with the, this uh, in it. And you, um, I keep showing you the can, but first of all, that's because, uh, I, I pulled it out and I'm using it. I'm not uh, being paid by this helmsman. Uh, in fact, there are other ones that I, I actually like better. But anyway, um, you after it dries from the spray, okay, um, it's hard enough that it's not going to, that's not going to smear, okay? Then you go over it with the, with the, with the actual a clear coat on the brush and you go over it for kind of lightly because again you don't want the solvents or whatever's in there I'm not a scientist I don't know what solvents or non solvents but something gets in there and anytime you paint a second coat it kind of raises the first coat a little bit okay um, well that's kind of what can happen so you go over it with a light coat with this uh, water based uh, I call it a water-based interior exterior polyurethane, and that's what the people at the paint store call it. And you do a light coat, let it dry, and then you put a good heavy coat over it. And then you're done, okay? And uh, that will last, for, if you do both sides, back and front, you, I could attach this to a telephone pole and leave it out there for three years, it'll be fine, okay? So that's a number of, um, of tips and let's go over them real quick because I did write them down for myself so I'll have notes okay the baby food jars the watercolor pencils was first make sure your paint is flowing is a good flowing paint mix um, flow aid with it enough to get it a good consistency and if it, you can't get it to do it's garbage okay um, no frayed brushes and also, do use eyeglasses for the tedious work where you need them, and even a flashlight, okay? Um, I hold a flashlight in my mouth, put eyeglasses on, and I can get in little points, and when people look at it from a distance, they don't have the glasses and the flashlight, but they say, wow, that came out nice. Well, that's how you do it, okay? Smudges, let them dry first, and then you can just wipe off any new paint. Use white primer. To block out any mistakes before you go over it and use white primer before you even paint the whole color so it, it looks brighter it's artwork it's not the house okay uh, use the clear coat water based and never oil based polyurethane over artwork um, but first use the spray and those are my uh, my helpful tints that tints oh good um, my helpful hints that I have discovered over the years 
um, a little at a time and probably